Welcome back, everyone. A brand new episode here on the Cabral Concept. So glad you could join me here today because we are going to be answering our top 10 functional medicine detox questions that we've gotten now over the past five years. So a functional medicine detox is something that I've been using in my private practice since about 2010. So it's been some time and we actually Well, here's the thing. We were using a functional medicine detox with the worst of the worst cases for about five years to seven years before we even brought it online. And one of the reasons we did that is because when you use a 21-day, especially a 21-day functional medicine detox with someone who's been told they have these incurable-based diseases, you start to see some pretty amazing things take place. But again, I never want you to take my word for it. I actually want you to put it to the test or simply speak with someone else that's completed a functional medicine detox before. The one that I'm using right now that I formulated back in 2016 was is in is the Equal Life Detox. Now, we've used this with well over 100,000 people around the world. Uh, it has exceptional results, but you can actually just ask for yourself inside of cabralsupportgroup.com. About 15,000 people, and and again, you're welcome to just ask the community, take a look at the success stories, but I'm not here to push a functional medicine detox on you. I'm really not. I used to use one from a different company, uh, and I had to piece it together. So back in 2010, I had studied uh, all around the world, Ayurvedic medicine, traditional Chinese medicine, uh, functional medicine, naturopathy, bioregulatory medicine, and what I realized was that in order for someone to truly heal, what you needed to do was first a subjective attractive method, meaning that the body was already so overwhelmed, but by by adding more and more to it was not necessarily helpful. So I realized that in order to lighten the load, reduce the total toxic load in the body, we wanted to do a functional medicine-based detox, which is really just a fancy way of saying we're going to help detoxify or filter the blood through the liver through a much faster degree. I don't have my mannequin here today. He's right there behind me. But basically, you have this very large organ under the right side of your rib cage. I'm not going to go through what a functional medicine detox is here today because that would be the whole episode. So what I'll do is I will actually link it up for you today. If you've never heard about a functional medicine detox, uh, don't begin one yet. You know, just listen to what what it is and why it can be beneficial. And you can go to stephencabral.com forward slash 2196. StephenCabral.com forward slash 2196. And then you can also, uh, what I'll do is I'll link up to a free detox course there. So I'm going to link up to what a functional medicine detox is, how to properly do one, and then a free detox course if you'd like to go even deeper. But I'll tell you right now, uh, it worked so well for the so-called incurables, we started using it with everyone as they kickstart to any program, whether it was a gut healing program, a thyroid program, a metabolic program, whatever it was, because when you lighten the total toxic load of the body, amazing things begin to happen. And it's really, it's very simple. And that's because if the body's not overwhelmed, it can start to do its job properly, right? Then this includes leaky gut, intestinal permeability, higher amounts of immunoglobulins, imbalanced blood sugar levels, imbalanced inflammation, imbalanced hormones, et cetera. So again, I'm not going to go through today. What I'm here to do is answer the top 10 questions we've gotten over the past five years. And again, simply stated, this is also one of the most easy things to complete. Back in the day, 2010, I had to use about 11 different nutritional supplements, fibers, binders, uh, things that help the body produce more glutathione for liver detoxification, um, uh, certain amino acids, et cetera. Now, it's very simple. Three products taken in a very specific way helps the body detoxify to just an amazing degree. But again, please don't take my Um, word for it. You can ask the community, you can ask people around you and um, ask specifically about the equal life detox since I have to say not all detoxes are created equally. Having said that, please then I'll link up another podcast on the difference between a cleanse, detox teas, juices, and a functional medicine detox. They're all very different. None of them are necessarily bad, but they're all very different. I'm going to link that up for you today as well. All right. Three links Additional links I would definitely check out at stephencabral.com forward slash 2196. All right, first question today is this. How long can you detox safely? It's a great question. 
So again, we're not talking about detoxing from drugs. We're not talking about detoxing from alcohol. We're talking about detoxifying the body, meaning to a greater degree, how long can we speed up liver detoxification, meaning helping your liver do its job to a greater degree? Okay, it's a good question because you're, bo- you're putting your body in a somewhat of a fasted state and you don't want to be in a deeper fasted state for really more than three weeks. So the max we have people do is 21 days. That has always seemed to be the case. When I was first starting out with functional medicine detoxes back in 2010, uh, there were a lot of uh, discussions and research around doing 28 days. I believe 28 days could be okay. For me, I always err on the side of caution. I always live by the uh, do no harm. And so I recommend 21 days. That's the maximum. And we've already built into our detox the ability for it to not have it plummet your hormone levels or thyroid levels, et cetera, like you can get with um, water fasting or just green juice fasting or something like that, okay? So 21 days is the maximum. And uh, what I would say is you can continue your detox in day in weeks two or three, because basically a 21-day detox is three seven-day detoxes. And the first two days is your shake fasting days, okay? Four shakes a day, you're, <clears throat> excuse me, you're eating every three and a half hours. So basically, and again, you can come up with your own schedule, but it's 8 a.m., 11.30 a.m., 3 p.m., uh, around 6 p.m. or so. It's right around those hours. And what you're doing is you're taking in 20 ounces of fluid with the daily nutritional support shake with the Ayurvedic detox capsules and the functional medicine detox capsules. Now, let's say that your goal is not necessarily weight loss or you're overall pretty healthy and you don't want to do those two liquid fasting days on weeks two or three, or maybe even just week three you don't want to. You want to do it for week two. It's okay. On any of those last two weeks, you can customize it. You can do one day of shake fasting or you can do two days of shake fasting. Or if you just want to follow the days three through seven meal plan and continue with that protocol from days three through 21, you're welcome to. I'll also link up an FAQ page that walks you through how to do this, okay? So again, that will be at stephencabral.com forward slash 2196. But how can you? How long can you safely detox? Again, this is not an unsafe program no matter what, but I also don't want people to go too deep into uh, a, a catabolism or, or fasted state for too long. So 21 days, that is the perfect amount of time we've seen. Um, you can start with just seven days if you want, but 21 days is going to allow for the deepest amount of detoxification. Okay, question number two is, can I drink coffee on a detox? Here's the thing. If you're going to stop taking in caffeine, don't do it on day one of a detox because you're going to blame the headaches and the low mood and the poor sleep and the all the other things on caffeine withdrawal, which is not a symptom of a detox, right? So you have to understand, if you're going to stop caffeine, stop it the week before. And then you'll be done with the headaches and you'll be done with the weaning off caffeine and that withdrawal, right? Because that's different. You can't, you can't blame a functional medicine detox for causing certain symptoms that are easy to blame on uh, caffeine withdrawal, okay? So here's the thing. Um, if you're typically having a cup of coffee in the morning, have your cup of coffee in the morning. You don't have to give it up. You just can't add sugar to it or any creams or things like that. So have a cup of black coffee in the morning, add a little bit of stevia if you'd like. Um, So that's it, okay? So black coffee or black tea in the morning uh, or your green tea would be totally fine in the morning before your lunch, don't have it after lunch. And that's that. And then again, if you want to wean off caffeine, okay, great time to do it, but do it the week before. And then you can listen to my podcast on how to wean off caffeine, all right? Question number three is, do I need to do the fasting days? Okay, kind of answer this with the first one, but yes, you want to do the fasting days. Even if your goal is not weight loss, like my goal is not weight loss, I do a functional medicine detox every 12 weeks, like our community does, one of the best ways to keep up with our toxic environment. Again, over 140,000 man-made chemicals in the environment now. I wrote my book three years ago, The Rain Barrel Effect. You have to understand is that it was 77,000 back then. More and more companies are producing more and more pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, plastics, you know, disinfectants, et cetera. We know about 50% of those cause cancer in the body. All our job is is to try to do our best to keep up with the world around us. That's the truth, right? If I'm walking down the street in Boston and there's a train going by, subway, 
car exhaust, et cetera, I'm breathing that in. I can't do anything about that, right? It is what it is. So what do I do? I don't worry about it. I'm not going to lose sleep over it. I'm going to do a functional medicine detox every 12 weeks. I do a seven day every 12 weeks. The first time you do one, ideally it's 21 days. And then every 12 weeks after that, a simple seven day. Again, it's easy to do. It gets easier every single time you do a detox, by the way. I've done now well over 30. I've done, done this obviously since 2010, uh, and it gets so much easier. So do you need to do the fasting days? I still do the fasting days, okay? Still do them. And if I lose three pounds or three and a half pounds or so, I can just put it on the back half of the detox or after it's over if I choose to. So I would still do them, but if you can't because of um, low blood sugar, low blood pressure, or um, you're just worried about losing weight, do smoothies on days one and two instead of uh, just doing your shakes. Meaning in a smoothie, you could add berries to it, right? Some low glycemic fruit to it. Uh, that would be acceptable if you chose to. Um, or maybe you uh, do the first day of smoothies and the second day you move on the days through seven meal plan. Here's the thing I talk about with a functional medicine detox. It's so much better to do it and do it to the best of your ability than not do it at all. Honestly, you're going to get benefit. So much better to do it and not be perfect, then not do it at all. So, you know, grab a group of, group of friends, coworkers, all do it together. It's much more to be in a supportive community. You can always join cabralsupportgroup.com. We cheer you on. We help. We answer your questions. And, and so, again, we're happy to do that. And then, as I said, weeks two and three, uh, ideally, if you want to lose 15 plus pounds or more, if you have that much weight to lose, definitely do the two shake fasting days each week. Um, if you have wellness-based issues, you definitely want to do the two uh, fasting days the all three weeks. But if not, again, you could do one fasting day. You could even do fasting days on days one and two, but have dinner each night if you choose to not do the shakes all day. So you can customize it a bit for you. It's okay. It is okay, but whenever you want maximum results, just follow the exact formula that's been proven now to work with hundreds of thousands of people, all right? So that's my recommendation. You know, it really is. You're going to make it work. You're going to do great, and don't worry about weeks two and three yet. Just get through week one, and then decide what you can do weeks two and three. That's the best way to do it. All right, number four, should I discontinue my other daily supplements? Great question. So I always tell people, don't use the extraneous supplements. Don't use the extras. But if your integrative health practitioner or naturopathic doctor has you on extra magnesium for sleep or liquid melatonin for sleep, or you're on the CBO protocol, or you're doing a heavy metal detox, or you're on a constipation protocol, or you're taking your vitamin D, keep going with that. I have no problem with that. It's not going to affect your detox. So don't worry about that. Don't, don't worry about it at all. Um, but let's say you're taking like all sorts of different nootropics and um, I don't know, the, the latest and greatest supplement, whatever that might be. Uh, you know, you're eating a pound of goji berries a day. I, you just, you know, you can wait a week or three weeks to, to, to on those, right? You can add those back in after if you need to. So don't discontinue anything your health practitioner uh, enabled you to do or something that's working really well for you, like for sleep. Like if you're doing our sleep health protocol, you don't have to stop that. You know, keep going with it. That's not an issue at all, okay? Good questions. Good questions from the community. I'm actually seeing these for the first time. I mean, I hear about them all the time, so it's not like these are new to me, uh, but they've been compiled and given to me and said, please answer these questions. And I said, I'm happy to. All right, what if you get constipation on the... Uh, detox. Okay. Since you are not taking in any bulk food, which means like food with starch and fiber and all that for the first two days, you may not have to have a bowel movement. So a bowel movement is bacteria mixed with all your food, you know, your fecal matter that is being moved along. If there is only liquid water, you may have to urinate a bit more if you're not used to drinking 10 glasses of water a day. That's okay. You know, it's good to flush through the kidneys as well. Uh, but you may not have to have a bowel movement. All right. So I just want to put that out there. Uh, you don't necessarily have to on days one and two, but of course, uh, it's not bad to have a bowel movement and it's good to have a one bowel movement per day. But again, typically you're eating food with that. So what can you do? You want to keep your bowel movements going. You can always add the intestinal cleanse along with the detox, the start of the detox, or even the day before. The intestinal cleanse is a gentle laxative, and it also combines a binder. So if you want to do a binder and a gentle laxative, you can use the intestinal cleanse. 
I don't know if this link works, but let me see if it does right now. So I should probably link to this. Um, StephenCabral.com forward slash detox links you to the detox that I'm talking about. But again, get more information on it first. And then let's see if intestinal cleanse works. I have no idea. My team is amazing at adding short links, but let's see if this one works. It is. All right. StephenCabral.com forward slash intestinal dash cleanse. Okay. And that is a cleanse, which again is different than a detox because it pulls things out, right? That's what a cleanse does. So you're welcome to do the intestinal cleanse along with it. Uh, totally fine with that. Totally fine with it. And a lot of people find just using their magnesium powder at night and their alkalizing vitamin C, C in the morning, which you're still welcome to do, um, works just fine as well. All right. So lots of different ways. And again, just write into cabralsupportgroup.com and we can help you there. All right. But no problem. Maybe like one out of 10 people get some constipation. and But again, it's relieved as you start to get into days three through seven with the meal plan. But again, less than 10%. All right. Can I use seasonings during the detox? The answer is yes. You are welcome to use seasonings. Sauces are no, right? You can still use your olive oil. Um, that's, that's the best one. You can still use some avocado oil. But the best seasonings are your oregano oil, cloves, rosemary, thyme, um, any of the herbs that would be naturally be very healing and great for the body anyways, because those are natural antimicrobials, antibacterials, antifungals, anti-mold, etc. So I have no problem with you using seasonings during your meals. E even some Himalayan sea salt and um, cracked black pepper. Those are totally fine as well. So no problem there. Uh, most herbs act as also great digestives, and um, certainly Himalayan sea salt and black pepper can make the dishes taste quite nice. Now, do I recommend adding a lot of garlic or or onion? The answer is typically no, because if you're having bloating issues and you're having gas issues, uh, bloat, uh, uh, garlic and onion can actually add more to that if you have fungal or bacterial overgrowth. So you're welcome to use those. It's not like garlic and onion are bad for you by any means, but if you're getting gas and bloating, you may want to admit those during the detox. Okay. Number seven is, will I be cold? Well, Here's the thing. Most people are not cold during the detox, but let's say it's January and you're someone that usually runs a little lower thyroid or cold in the first place. You could be a little chillier. Why? You're not taking in any food. Your body's looking to conserve energy. You're, you're in a deeper state of autophagy, which means your body's breaking down bad cells and bacteria and proteins in your body, and you're kind of conserving energy. So dress warmer, bring a sweater to work, uh, put the heat an extra degree warmer, and, uh, and you'll be just fine. All right? So you shouldn't be, but again, if you are, please dress warmer then. All right. Uh, and again, it's not a bad thing, but it just means that your body is uh, going a little bit inwards, right? We make sure that, again, we're getting enough amino acids and protein each day so that you don't, don't become too catabolic and that it doesn't affect your thyroid. Because again, we work with so many people with thyroid issues uh, that, do, that do absolutely great with the functional medicine detox. All right. Uh, number eight is, can I take pain relievers for a headache, pain relievers for a headache, or my medications? Okay, here's the thing. We are not allowed to give medical advice. So no matter how many times you ask and how polite you are asking about your disease or your medications, we are not legally allowed to give you any answers on that. But what I will tell you is this. Please, do not discontinue your medications. I recommend that you continue on with your medications during the detox because only your medical doctor can give you advice on discontinuing medication. But I can also tell you that your medical doctor has most likely never heard of or studied uh, functional medicine detoxification, even though it's a natural process within the liver and the body. All right, so that is number eight. Number nine is this, can I put the daily nutritional support in hot water? Okay, a lot of people like to use the chocolate uh, detox. So it contains the chocolate daily nutritional support powder, which is all your vitamins, all your minerals, all your detox factors, all your nutrients, all your electrolytes, everything all built into this one shake. Again, we tried to think of everything because we've been doing this a very long time. All right, so yes, you can. You can put it into hot water. A lot of people say, well, that will, that will denature the protein. You have to understand is that these are protein, essentially extracts. These are plant, this is all plant-based. This is a vegan-based product. So that allows people that are not vegan to use it and people that are vegan to use it. And, uh, and it's very easy to digest. We're taking the amino acids from pea protein, mainly, and a little bit of amino acids from rice because we wanted to create a complete protein. So um, you can add it to hot water. We just recommend that you drink it within the next half hour, just like you would if you were cooking your food. 
All right. So that's basically how we recommend it there. I have no problem with that. People um, on not when they're on the detox, they put it in their hot oatmeal. Um, I have no problem with that either. Okay. So not a problem at all. However you like to get in your water and your daily nutritional support putter, fantastic. Some people do make it into a chocolate pudding and that's great too. All right. How often can I do the detox? Number two is question number 10. I guess we have a bonus question that I just saw here as well. How often can I do the detox? The detox is meant to do once every 12 weeks, 21 days though, 21 days, uh, once you, the first time you're doing it and the, or once a year. Okay. So every year you can do a 21 day detox and then every 12 weeks you can maintain with a seven day detox. People have asked before, can I do a 21 day detox? 21 day detox every 12 weeks. Well, it gives you nine weeks of essentially recovery time. Um, not that you really need to recover from it. And the answer is yes, as long as you're working with an integrative health practitioner, naturopathic doctor, certified health coach, that's giving you a reason why you're doing that. Meaning like you've got some real uh, health imbalances that you're trying to work on, uh, a lot of toxicity, uh, you're looking to lose a good amount of weight. Those are all valid reasons, but you really want to work with your naturopathic doctor or, or integrative health practitioner on that. But for the most part, 21 day detox, a lot of people do it in January. And then uh, beginning of April, end of March, they do their seven day. Uh, end of June, beginning of July, they do a seven day. And then mid September, fall season, we do one more. So yeah, that's absolutely when people do it. Some people sneak in another one between Thanksgiving and Christmas or New Year's because of all the holiday uh, cheats that kind of pop in here and there. But you know, Again, that's that's acceptable uh, if you're trying to bring down that total toxic load. For the most part, every 12 weeks, that's what you need. It's always what's been taught over the past 6,000 years in traditional Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, and every form of ancient-based medicine, uh, or I should say an ancient-based wisdom, except, of course, for conventional medicine. All right. Uh, and the last one, this is a bonus question. Um, should Is there a best time to start the detox to coincide with my menstrual cycle? Okay, this is a great question. Be coming up a lot lately. And listen, here's the thing. There's never a perfect time, right? There's always a wedding. There's always a birthday. There's always a uh, cold. There's always whatever it might be, right? And the, kind of the same goes for your menstrual cycle. So what I would say is this. You don't need to time it with your menstrual cycle. It can be much more challenging. You might you want to time it overall with your life. But I will say, because people want me to answer the question, and I'm happy to, if there was an ideal time to start your detox, it would be within like your first three to five days of your menstrual cycle, with day one being the first day of menstruation. So that would be the ideal time. The least ideal time would probably be the last seven days of your cycle. Okay. But again, I still think it's okay to do that. And if you feel any dysregularity with your cycle, doing a little bit more of an intermittent fast, it will rebound normally, you know, within 30 days. So again, best time would be the beginning of your cycle. Uh, but we have women complete their, uh, 7, 14, or 21 day detox any time of their cycle. And because again, there's just never a perfect time. There really isn't. And in the end, we're always trying to get ourselves healthier uh, in the long run. So these were the top 10 plus one bonus here today. I'm always happy to answer additional questions. The best place to get those detox questions answered, well, by definitely going to stephencabral.com forward slash 2196 and listening to the additional podcasts. But also feel free to ask, Anytime. We have an amazing community, and that's at cabralsupportgroup.com. Uh, I really do wish you all the best. I've never seen work anything work better in my practice uh, than a functional medicine detox, namely the Equalife Detox. And that's why we, I mean, get, honestly, we guarantee it. I don't want to sell it to you. I don't want to push it on you if you're not ready for it, but it's guaranteed to work. It really is. I've never seen anything work better. And I know that not everyone we're going to get to work with one-on-one. -on -one. And so this is really that next best thing to kickstart your program for a whole body reset. You can find out more about the detox at stephencabral.com forward slash detox. I uh, wish you all well. I really do. If this podcast was helpful, please do feel free to share it with anyone else you believe it could serve. Thank you.